you don't want to spend more than a hundred dollars on, on this particular item, right? What can you do? What do you usually do in a situation like this? Oh, buy 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 a bunch. Yeah, or you can buy other items, right? Mm -hmm. If you say that I'm not going to buy, you know what? I'll buy a suit. I'll buy this briefcase. I'll buy this umbrella. And if I buy the whole bunch of this, can you give me a discount so that everything is $100 per piece, right? So that's a situation where the scale gets bigger, right? Then his, his MDO and his LAA, it expands, right? He's thinking that, okay, then if I just give you a flat discount, I can still make money. So this is an example, just like Verizon, you have to sort of think differently. You have to think from another perspective when you're explaining them. Because what you're doing is you're turning a competitive situation into a collaboration, right? Because you're identifying that we both have the same type of goals, right? So this is a situation where, like, just like how Verizon would be telling Apple that, guess what? We can do business, and we're the most desirable business partner for you. Our network is the best, right? So I just wanted to kind of draw this out for you guys, just to kind of make you understand that this is how you sort of plan for negotiations. Because you have to ask yourself, what do I really want? What is my goal? Your goal is always somewhere in the middle. And you have to identify, OK, maybe I have multiple goals. Then you have multiple sets of this. right? And you know, I only want to sell him so many at this price. There's a price. There's a quantity that I'm going to sell to you guys. right? So I just wanted to kind of make this for you guys. right? Just kind of like to understand. So now let's talk about negotiations. What do you think is the most, so negotiations require something, right? They require preparation. It's just like an exam. If you're going to be taking an exam, you prepare for an examination, right? So when you're negotiating, or when you know that you're, go you're going to try to negotiate with someone, right? What's the first thing you should be doing? Even before the negotiation, what should you be doing? Akio-san. What is what is the first step before you start negotiating? Let's say negotiations are one week later. What should you be doing now? Anybody want to help a lot? Prepare. Prepare. Right. Preparations. Right. So that's really, really important. Preparations. What kind of preparations? Like, uh, estimate the other, the other exactly. strategy. So, Let's talk about this, right? Try and predict. This is probably a word you guys have seen before, right? Predict. The other side's strategy. Right? So what are they going to try to do? What options do they have? Right? What prices, if I tell him that I want to buy this for $75, what prices is he going to tell me that he can sell it for? How is he going to say it? Right? These things are really important. So, so predictions are important, right? This is like you're trying to think ahead, right? And you're and you're preparing. You're thinking, if he says this, right, what am I going to say? What what will my response be? If he proposes this, should I accept it? If he says I'm willing to give you that price if you sell me 10 of these. Should I accept that? Or if he says, I'm willing to give you 10% higher than you want if you buy seven of these. Is that acceptable? Right? So that's one thing you have to predict, right? What else do you have to do? What's another part of preparations that's really important? Yeah, 
that, that's another one, right? You have to. So this is kind of like, or let's let's just call it maybe. Let's use a fancy word: self analysis. You have to analyze yourself, right? Self analysis in the sense that if you're a company, once again, you are analyzing, right? You're saying that okay. If he's saying that buy eight of these, and I'll give you 10% off, right? Or buy 10 of these, and I'll give you price that you know the price that you want, right? So all those things. So you're you're calculating. You have to do the calculations, right? And you have to be like, okay, well then, how much money am I going to spend in total, right? How much is it actually going to cost me? So self-analysis is important. Predicting the other side strategy is important. There's another thing that. There's another thing that we haven't talked about in preparations. What do you think it could be? But we what do people do in labs? You guys are research. familiar with laboratories, right? What do people do? They research, right? Don't you think research is important? Yes. Right? Research. This is a huge part of negotiations. You must research. And really, remember we were talking about last time when we were looking at products, right? We were talking about product development and why companies like Amazon and Rakuten, right? it's so difficult for shops to compete against them. Because it's so easy to research something's price, right? So you could be researching the price of a product, right? But more importantly, in this case, when you research, right, what do you get out of research? Like options, maybe. Right? You know what you get? That's where your VAT comes from. Your alternative, your options, your alternative comes from research, right? Then you know that you know what I know. For instance, and and not just like this is this is not just your batna, right? But it is as you say, it's options, right? Options, and even shared goals. Remember what we talked about? Collaborative negotiations. When Apple comes to Verizon and says that AT&T is offering me 12% of their profits for each iPhone that they sell, right? Verizon, if they're smart, they would have done the research, right? And they would have said, okay, I think these are my competitors, right? This is each of their backgrounds. We know that Apple doesn't have the towers that we have, right? We know that our data is stronger. So to be able to present those options, right? To be able to present those options and show Apple that we have shared goals, you have to do research, a lot of research. And it also gives you what your backgrounds are. Your research might tell you that, you know what? Uh, Motorola is coming out with the Android phones, right? You guys have seen the Droid phones, right? And we think that the public is really, really, you know, that, that they really, really like it. Android is a great operating system. The phones are really fast, right? The browsers are really, really good. So Verizon might say, you know what? That's fine. We're not going to give you 12%. We're going to give you 10%. And you either take this deal or you can leave it. That's it. That's, that's our final offer. Because they think that, you know what? In the end, we're actually going to sell, we may, we may sell more Android phones. Because people like Android more than they like. What's the operating system for iPhones? Is it like it's, uh, iOS, right? iOS? iOS, right? <coughs> so iOS is OK, but like the Android is a much better operating system. It's a lot faster, right? So they might say that, you know what? That gives us a bat now to say that, OK, <coughs> we're not going to cut our profits for you guys that much, because we're thinking about the long term. The money that we earn, we're going to need it to build more towers, to build better phones, to give our customers better service, right? So their LAA, their least acceptable arrangement, right, is 
and their BATNA, both of those things really are coming from research. It's really, really important. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like the art of war, right? If you know yourself as well as you know your enemy, then you're never going to lose a battle, right? So that's really, really important. So preparations is, is super, it's, there's a lot of levels of preparations, as you guys can see. And uh, you know, in terms of understanding how to succeed at negotiations, this is really kind of some of the steps that you have to take. You have to know yourself, self-analyze. How much money do we need per iPhone? How much money can we realistically, right? What is our best option to give to Apple, right? Predicting the other side's strategy. What are they going to say? How much do we think AT&T will offer them, them, right? And then all the other research, right? What is our walk away? How much should we walk away? At? What are our options? Do we have goals that are in common with them? Or are we just trying to make money out of them? Is there a way that we can collaborate? Right? Sometimes there isn't. Some, sometimes there isn't a way to collaborate, right? For instance, when you, when you pay the government taxes, right? You can't, I mean, that's not really a negotiation because if you're the citizen of a country, you have to pay taxes, right? But the thing is that, the problem is in that case, like, you don't really see a shared goal. Because most people who work for companies, right, they have company provided health insurance, right? You don't really rely on the government for much other than like electricity and things like that. And that even you're paying to the power companies, right? So the taxes that you give, there's not really like a shared goal, right? You're paying for like, you know, people's pensions and things like that, people's pensions and healthcare, other people in society. Of course, that's a contribution, and you know, if you look at it from a different perspective, you might say, okay, well, this is my, I have to contribute this because this is my country, right? And it's my responsibility as well to look after other people because I work for a company and I earn a certain amount of money, right? But in reality, there isn't really a shared goal because that money isn't coming back to you in any way. That's going to other parts of the population. Um, so that's just an example of a place where there isn't a shared goal, right? It's just a one-way thing, and you can't really negotiate with the government. Basically, the government tells you how much money they're going to take from you, and that's just something you have to accept, right? So this is just kind of like something that I wanted to kind of go through with you guys, give you guys like a basic understanding of negotiations. Negotiations, like movies, right? It's it's, it's an art. Some people are just really really good negotiators. But beyond that, there's a lot of simple things that you can learn that can make you an effective negotiator. And you know, it's almost like you have to negotiate almost every day, right? Whether it's work, you know, your colleague wants you to do some work for him or something like that because he's going on vacation, right? You know, then you might be like, okay, I'm willing to do this for you because we work in the same department and obviously we want our department to do well, but I'm going to expect something in return. My wife and I are going on vacation, let's say, in six weeks. I need you to look after my work for a week. Those are the types of things that, you know, those are simple negotiations you might have to do like every, every day almost at work, right? So these are just some simple examples that I wanted to kind of go through with you guys. So with the time that we have remaining, I wanna, um, I'm gonna assign you guys a 